let's just start out by taking some white. Add a little bit of the cobalt blue. I'm not going to do anything else that color, and I'm going to begin with that. Now I, I can add some warmth to it as I go, but maybe less is more in the beginning. Just kind of seeing where it takes you, and you know, you add you add a color, you can't take it out. But I can always start with less, and then add more colors as I go. So we'll just see how this works to get the sketch. I'm just not going to focus on that cloud it, itself. Just mainly on the blue sky. I can add a little bit more of the cobalt blue and now maybe I'm thinking I can feel the the need for something like a phthalo blue so we'll add that in. Phthalo blue and red produce a nice black. And I'm going to start right down in the corner and really just focus on the shapes that I'm seeing with these darks. I'm not going to go too high with this in the sky just yet. I don't think I did that last time. And as I add the lighter sky over the top, I don't want those trees to blend in with the sky too much as I work. I'd rather get the sky done to some degree. before I move into the, the dark trees. And so as I get back over here, I don't need to think about as much detail. It's just kind of right here. I want the viewer to really focus on some of that texture. I want it to be nice, natural. So I'm just looking to fill in some general shapes. pretty thick. And of course if you're looking for my reference photos or the full length version of this step by step you can check out my memberships down below the video either my YouTube memberships or my Patreon both of which give you access to the same things. So as I flutter the brush through the top, I'm just trying to just play with it into the blue and get some sort of pattern. And some of that burnt sienna that's underneath, that kind of helps a little bit, creating some different tones, colors. So cloud floating back here, kind of right underneath that blue that I added. Okay, I'm going to pick up some of the, the gray here, the, the black here that I mixed. Try to make it more of a gray. A little bit of warmth. And now I, I'm not going to go too far into the white just yet. I'm, I'm going to focus on what I left. And then I can expand this this shadowing further if, if I need to. Now I'm just going to start picking up color as I go and just try to make adjustments where I see fit. Alright, I'm going to grab some more of the gray. So I'm going to really try to focus on the shape I see in the sky around these mountains. And 
hopefully revealing what I want to see in the skyline. And thinking about what changes I want in the clouds by just grabbing some of this white, blue. I can see that I want to start to feather this into the the white areas. I want them to be a little more soft. I'm gonna go right into more of the foreground. I'm gonna mix up a darker color for up close here. Pick up some blue, some white. Keep brightening that up as I get further away. I'm going to pick up the Cad Yellow Deep. Now again, when, when I'm working on something like this foreground, not focused on specifics yet, but I'm trying to think of if I could generalize these splotches of color into more blocks that's kind of like what I think of blocking in and that getting that pattern down not focusing on the brightest highlights but something kind of right in in the middle of it all and just trying to go with the obvious build it in from there so it may look kind of unorganized in the way that I'm approaching this, but really I'm just doing what's most comfortable and just kind of following that gut feeling. Back here behind in the midground, as that sun starts to gleam across these trees. So as I get into the the actual horizon line, I'm going to switch to the, the dagger striper brush. And reason being, I just want a little more control. And what I'm going to shoot for to start is something that's just darker than the sky above it. I want to create a lot of atmosphere. So we're going to just lay in these two ridge lines back in the distance. Get a nice sharp edge if I can. So I'm just working this color up to the, the edge here. And I actually need to finish what's up in the sky there so I can just rub some of that blue. And this is a pretty general color. Again, something in the middle of it all and something I can work from and kind of take it either direction both highlights and shadows just a good starting point add some more white blue to that Whew. 
So I'm just trying to find some colors that take me from one to the other. So I'm trying to transition between this blue to the kind of this more of this warm red. And a little bit darker through here. I'm going to grab some of this cad yellow lemon, cad yellow deep, grab some white, and then of course some of the color I've been using is blending gonna blend into that. bit of orange just for this area low a little more of the yellow lemon a couple spots and so I'll work at this longer but now we're finally about covered up But I'm, I'm going to switch. This is a just a newer dagger brush. Uh, the other one was, you know, a little bit frayed, which is fine as I work through some of the rougher uh, uh, portions, uh, the rougher stages of this. But now I'm going to be a little more delicate with the brush. So I'm going to switch to this one, a little cleaner. And I'm going to do just that across the sky. What, what I want to see is... Uh, a softness that that resembles the feeling and the reference and I'm using I would say probably half of the length of this brush the front half just to softly uh, swipe across these colors And again, in the same way that I bounce around the whole painting at the, the beginning portion and, and look for the most obvious things that come to mind, I, I do the same within the sky. And, you know, what are the most obvious, or, or more so, what are the largest changes I can make uh, in the fastest possible way? Because the more we make those larger changes, the more we can assess what the rest might need or not need. Let that white. Ooh. If there's unwanted brush marks, uh, I think it's, that's easily fixed. But sometimes better left for a later time. So I, I do. That's just one of those things again where it's it's better can always be adjusted. If anything can be adjusted. At a later time, it's probably best to just wait for a later time and do something else. I think that working in that way can really help us uh, avoid the mistakes we don't want to make.
just being really careful about this, trying to focus. Just a little more of a even color down here, right underneath all that white. Just, just a tap of that color and don't need any medium or anything that's just going to be enough for me to just pick up some of that color we don't need a lot of detail in these rocks just enough just want the color on there now I can go back and fix it so I'm not gonna stress about that yet yellow, white we're going to brighten some of these trees Get the light shining in Focus on the treetops. So as I start to just tap on this brush, these these tree these pine boughs start to just come alive. And I can adjust it. It's just a good starting point. Just perfect exactly kind of what I was hoping and looking for and I'm sticking to the those soft green areas that I added and I'm just adding some detail into that over the top tapping it on just letting the, the paint fall off Same technique, just tapping it on. Some texture is better than no texture, as long as you're you're not you're not going too thick too soon. That should come right at the end. Oof, that's fine. That'll work.
which gets me started. So I kind of know what I'm thinking about. Uh, you know, I want to fade this detail as I get into this part up in here. So I'm going to start with the most detail, the sharpest detail, which is right up front, low in the corner. And get that in first. And then that kind of gives me a better idea of when I ask myself, is that enough detail or not? Rather than going the other way, sometimes you can put too much detail back in here before you get into here. I'm almost squinting my eyes as I'm doing this closer detail because it really pops out at you more and so by doing that you're kind of helping yourself see it as a whole rather than micro focusing on you know something specific yep that's looking good just a couple more details couple things to look at back in here okay so I think I'm gonna just call it for now and just kind of wrap up here the last couple brush strokes I want to thank you for joining me I hope you enjoyed this painting uh, again check out my memberships if you'd like the full-length version of this video and until next time thanks again we'll see you then